We're looking here at a new unit on rational expressions, rational equations, and what these are is these are just fractions that have algebra in it, fractions with x. Uh, so it's really nothing extremely new. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of factoring as we go uh, in order to break down these fractions, and then we're going to do uh, addition and subtraction with them, we're going to do multiplication and division, we're going to do equations. But we're going to actually start out with graphing and identifying the key features of one of these functions so that we can get a sense for how they behave. First example here we have f of x which is really just saying y or so we have y equals negative 4 over x plus 2 and that whole thing minus 1. Now rational expressions, rational functions are weird in that if you have a graph you're going to have something like this as your graph. You're going to have something that's going along pretty smoothly and then shoots upwards towards infinity and then comes back through the warp hole over on the other side and continues upwards and then shoots across. So they behave unusually and sometimes uh, depending on if it's positive or negative they'll be going like that and then up in these two quadrants kind of opposite each other like that. So in order to get a sense for what they look like, we'll need to plot a few points and get started with it. First thing that we're asked, though, is to find excluded values and asymptotes. So excluded values, uh, we're used to looking at the denominator to say what will make something go to zero. In the same way that when we factor something, we try to find the solutions by saying what makes it go to zero. When we look at this x plus 2 here, the value for x that would make the bottom go to zero is negative two. The reason we call this an excluded value is what happens when you go to your calculator and you divide by zero. You get an error. You cannot divide by zero. It's not defined in math. So our excluded values is just going to be negative two. There's only one in this case. Then we have these asymptotes. And when we drew that real quick test equation, test function over here, and it shot up like this, there was a certain uh, horizontal line that this function will never touch, and there's a certain vertical line that this function will never touch, this graph will never touch. And we call those uh, asymptotes. And so to find those, uh, what we do for the horizontal is we look for a term that's outside of the fraction. So if this is the fraction here, the term outside that negative one is going to be our horizontal asymptote. So we really are left with y equals negative one. And the reason it's y uh, is because if you get rid of this, that's all you're left with. You have, remember we said f of x is really the same as y, so y equals negative one. The vertical asymptote then is uh, going to be related to our excluded values. So we're going to say x equals negative 2. So when x is equal to negative 2, things go crazy. Uh, we end up with a divide by 0 error. So armed with all of this, we can go ahead and make ourselves a quick graph. At y equals negative 1, and the reason we need the x and the y part included uh, is because these are both line. So y equals negative 1 is a horizontal line on this graph. And I'm going to draw that in like that. And then x equals negative 2 is a vertical line on the graph. I'm going to give it dashed lines like that. So these are the uh, lines that our graph will never touch. Now let's change color. And we have to plug in a few points. When we're making an xy table, I always start with the vertical asymptote. If we only have one, we'll just start with that in the middle of my x's. And then I'll go a little bit lower than that and a little bit higher than that. And what that does is that allows me to graph the fewest points possible uh, while getting the ones that I know are going to matter. And I know that negative 2 is not going to work. It's an excluded value, so I don't have to go looking for that. The other ones, though, I'm going to actually be plugging into my equation here. So if I start with negative 4, when x is equal to negative 4, if I take a negative 4 and plug that in here, on top I have, 
and I'm actually, I never like negative signs kind of floating in space like that, so I'm going to move that negative sign to the top of that fraction. You can do that. So I have negative 4 over, simplify that, negative 4 over negative 2. So negative 4 over negative 2, and the whole thing minus 1. Well, I know this reduces to just 2 minus 1, and that leaves me with a positive 1. And you have to repeat these, uh, repeat this process for each of these. So I'm now going to plug in a negative 3 down here. So I have negative 4 divided by, and if I add these together, I get negative 1, and then minus 1. So really I have 4 minus 1, or 3. Then I'm going to do negative 1 and 0 yet. So if I plug in a negative 1, I have negative 4 over, add these together, positive 1. So negative 4 over 1, all that minus 1, which is just negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. And then finally last one, we have 0, plug in 0, negative 4 over 2, negative 4 over 2 minus 1 is negative 2 minus 1 which is negative 3. So we've got all of this and now we're going to plot these points. So I go to my graph and I go to the point negative 4, positive 1. Go to the point negative 3, positive 3. And I have negative 1, negative 5 and I have 0, negative 3. Now if you did not know the secret or the, the common pattern, these two points are not going to be enough information to help you graph this. However, if you do know the pattern that it's going to creep up along these asymptotes um, and then quickly shoot up towards the other asymptote, you can make a quick sketch like this. And it's going to be reasonably close. The key thing when you're sketching these graphs is that you go through those points and you never touch the estimate. You can get very close and after a while you'll get very close but you'll never touch. One more uh, quick example here. Uh, we're going to start with our excluded values again and then work through our asymptotes and our graphing. So excluded values in this situation uh, is going to be what makes this, what we can plug in to make this go to zero. And if it doesn't seem obvious to you, what I would always do is take the entire bottom and set it equal to zero and solve that equation. That's a much easier way than sometimes just uh, looking for the obvious answer. So we add 10 to both sides and we end up with 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5 and then we get x equals 2. So our excluded value is just going to be 2. And you can see 5 times 2 is 10, minus 10 is 0, so it does work. Vertical asymptote, we can right away know that the excluded value is going to give us that, so we can write it in as x equals 2. And then our horizontal asymptote is the uh, thing that we're left with when we get rid of the fractional part, so it's whatever is left out here. And I don't see anything out there, um, so that's the equivalent of saying plus zero. So you still have something even though you don't see it. It's going to be y equals zero. So we're armed with our uh, excluded values, our asymptotes. So the horizontal line y equals zero is just right here across the x-axis. The vertical line x equals positive two throw a dash line on just like that and we're going to look for the same general pattern that we saw above. Now again when I'm doing my x values I'm going to put 2 in the middle and then work my way backwards and forwards I know that 2 is not going to work and when I plug in 0 into this equation I have 0 minus 10, so I just have 7 over negative 10. And sometimes you'll get 
beautiful fractions. So we'll have to deal with that. Plug in a 1 here. And when I plug in a 1 for x, I get 5 minus 10, or 7 over negative 5. Continue on, we're going to do that with 3. So if I plug in 3, 5 times 3 is 15, minus 10 is 5, so 7 over 5. And then with 4, 5 times 4 is 20, 20 minus 10 is 10, so we're left with 7 over 10. And you'll notice that uh, you get a lot of symmetry, um, especially when it's uh, y equals 0 as your line. But even up above here, you get a lot of symmetry in um, this part, and then with this part here, uh, and that's supposed to happen. It, it is going to be relatively uh, symmetrical, just uh, negative, so it'll be the opposite. So you can expect something like that. And let's graph these points. So 0, negative 7 tenths. So probably around here. And then 1, negative 7 fifths. So go over 1, negative 7 fifths, that's like negative 1.4. It's about right there. 2 doesn't do anything, then we have 3. And positive 1.4. And then we have 4, and a little less than 1, only 7 tenths. So we have these points on here. And what this really does is, again, just give us a guide. So, so we throw on our graph there, throw on our graph here, and there we have our rational functions graph. You'll notice that we had quadrants uh, 2 and 4 up here, we have quadrants 1 and 3. Um, if you're not familiar with the numbering of quadrants, it's just 1, 2, 3, 4. But uh, the quadrants will be a little bit different depending on if the uh, fractional part has a negative sign out front like it did in the first one, or it does not have a negative sign out front like in the second one. So just uh, be careful that it's not always going to be exactly the same. Good luck.